a man who needs no introduction. We're here to talk about Destiny 2 Deej. Hey. This is Hi, uh, welcome. Thanks for coming out. Well, thanks for having us. I think I may be the most excited right now on this couch. I've literally been <laughs> we've had her tied up back here just for this moment. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I did come fully dressed. I have my warlock necklace. I'm Excellent. ready to go. Um so trying to curry favor with jewelry. I it's it's shiny, it's nice. Look, I heard you're a warlock too. I am a warlock, yes. Best class, I think so. Well, I mean, everyone needs to choose for themselves, but I'm heavily, heavily too. biased. Are you a Titan? I mean, of course I'm a Titan. You would be a Titan. I would be a Titan. <laughs> so Destiny 2 trailer dropped. Everybody lost their minds. Everybody's very excited about this. We, all of our guardians were losing our light because of this new evil entity. Can we talk a little bit more about his motivation for Absolutely. stealing our light? Yes. How so rude. we introduced uh, the main villain mm -hmm. uh, in Destiny 2 here at E3, Dominus Gaul, who is the leader of the Red Legion. Mm -hmm. uh, he is, uh, you know, the the full military might of the Kapal Empire. He's mm -hmm. come to Earth to claim the Traveler for himself. This is uh, you know, a warlord that has waged war across the galaxy, conquered untold numbers of worlds, and he feels that the Traveler should have chosen the Cabal to be the Guardians. And he looks upon you know, the, the humans or the Exos of the Awoken as being unworthy. So he comes here to capture the Traveler for himself and to claim the light the very thing that makes us guardians for himself and to strip us of our power and our weapons and all the things that make us the heroes of the game mm -hmm. to send us limping back out into the wild where we will have to master new forms of combat so that we can reunite the survivors of humanity and fight back to liberate our city and reclaim everything that is rightfully ours that we've been sworn to protect. What a tagline. Right? All right. <laughs> well, wait a minute. So he came and took the Traveler. Yep. What do we got? You got uh, a new adventure waiting for you. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to find new ways to be a guardian. Uh, you're going to have to unlock new mysteries that will make you more powerful. Uh, I won't spoil the story for you. Uh, we're, we're doubling down on the story that we're telling. We're raising the stakes. Uh, you can see the last safe city come under attack in the opening act, and then we'll send you out to explore new worlds. Uh, you'll be able to go to new places across the solar system and back again. Uh, you'll discover the vanguard who are out there fighting for their very existence as well. They're not just hunkering down in the tower, waiting to give you helmets or give you walking orders. They are also struggling for their very existence. And by reuniting the forces that protect humanity, you'll be able to launch that counterattack and see if we can reclaim the city. So that's the basic theme of the game. It's uh, at first about loss and it's at first about struggle, but destiny is always about the hero's tale. So it'll be about recovering the things that make you more powerful and taking the fight to this brand new enemy, the most powerful enemy that we've ever set against you. So speaking of the hero's tale, we see uh, our Vanguard, our Cade, our Zavala, they're sad, they're broken, they're on yeah. these separate planets. Don't forget Ikora. Don't, of course, I would never forget Ikora. Come on, Ikora. I know, <laughs> she's, she has a special place in my heart. Um, so are we gonna learn more about their history, about their backstory? I know that lore and character development is something that's so important to this world. Mm -hmm. uh, can we mm -hmm. expect to see something about our old favorites, maybe the Sov siblings, maybe mm -hmm. Master Rahul the Cryptarch? What, what is he up <laughs> oh, to? Yes, he, he was the main villain in Destiny 1, Master, <laughs> Master Rahul the Cryptarch. <laughs> At least in the first I'm blasted triggered. dice. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this he is and like his music. blue engrams. <laughs> oh. So uh, I think you'll find these characters living in the now mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, when we uh, were at the uh, Destiny 2 gameplay premiere earlier uh, last month, uh, there was sort of an origin story about Zavala. So we are interested mm. in talking to you a little bit more about the motivations of these characters. But as they are confronted with not being guardians anymore, as they are confronted with not having the power, especially for a character like Ikora, right. who's all about you know the arcane mysteries of the Traveler and the mysticism that turns us into heroes, uh, to see them confront that reality and to find them out in the wild dealing with this new reality all in their own way, mm -hmm. I think you'll learn a little bit more about what types of heroes they are, what motivates them, mm -hmm. and you will experience them as characters in a story more than vendors in a space where you come to them to sort of cash in the rewards from your journeys to get new stuff. Stand on their table, annoy them all the time. Dancing, <laughs> yeah, on, dancing the on, the on their table. Dancing seriously. Absolutely. And we get to fight alongside them from what we saw in a little bit of a clip. It yeah. looked 
pretty awesome. Do we get to see any special new powers with them, or is it just pretty much the basic? Well, every single player of the game gets to embrace special new powers. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going to become the Dawnblade. <sighs> you're going to become the Sentinel. And that's one of the great things about Destiny is we're always challenging the players of this game to embrace new ways to fight or to go to new places or to discover new aspects of the story or to take down new raid bosses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Crucible is a great place where you get to do that. Uh, you know, we've got uh, here at E3 this new mode that we're calling Countdown, and you can see some of the characters in this environment using some of those new abilities, uh, using some of those new super attacks, uh, even if it's just punching someone in the back. <laughs> so, so, so brave. And uh, this is all about detonating those captured explosives that you see. And there's two of them on every map. So you have to choose which direction you're going to go in. Here's the Arc Strider in action, oh, you know, the combat gorgeous. acrobat mm -hmm. with a, a staff of pure energy. And uh, that's uh, a charge that's been set. So uh, you defuse that charge to win the match or you clear the map of, uh, of your opponents. So you guys, I mean, it, it took a fair amount of time to really get the balance right in Crucible when it came to these using these superpowers. Would, yeah. and so you just took taking it all the way back to zero again. Yes. Well, it could be said that that is a job that is never done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but indeed, our, our sandbox design team took a look at when we're making a sequel, there's such a culture built up around the Hunter, the Titan, and the Warlock. I mean, mm -hmm. You're wearing Warlock jewelry here at E3, and we Guilty. love you for it. <laughs> but what we wanted to do was we wanted to preserve that sense of personal investment in your class, but also give you new, di new and different ways to fight that you can embrace and master. And that mm -hmm. is a challenge, to take the sandbox that people know and love and infuse it with some new abilities, some new different types of attacks and fighting styles. Mm -hmm. We're also changing up the way the weapons work. If you want to carry an elemental primary weapon, you can yes. do that. Uh, wait, what now? They're back? They're back. I uh, can't the, wait. The Sunshot <laughs> Exotic Hand Cannon deals solar damage. Uh, it's a great combination with oh. a scout rifle or a pulse rifle, so you can take down those enemy shields with your energy weapon and then finish the job with uh, your kinetic weapon. You know, that's where you deal in lead. Mm -hmm. And then there are the power weapons. So if you're used to those one-shot, one-kill weapons like sniper rifles or shotguns or the new grenade launchers, those are all in a power weapon slot. And uh, you can acquire, here in the Crucible, you can acquire that power ammo when it spawns. You've got two purple icons on the screen right now. And those are uh, places, those are dispatcheries where you can go and get your power ammo. Here's the grenade launcher in action on the screen right there. And uh, cutting back to a sidearm. Oh, sidearms are back? Sidearms are there. Oh, like sidearms. Side yep, there's one right being used right there. It's even silenced. Uh, what was the decision like to move it to 4v4 in Crucible? The Crucible has always been a pretty chaotic environment with these 6v6 engagements. And one of the things we wanted to do was we wanted to create a, a stronger sense of discipline and focus in the Crucible so that it's a more watchable experience. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can follow as a spectator or it's something that you can learn from as a combatant. Uh, I've always loved the Crucible. I'm living proof that you don't have to be awesome at it to have fun <laughs> in the Crucible. Uh, you were telling me before the show that I PvP am... is not your favorite game. It is engagement. not my game. But in uh, a 4v4 engagement like we're seeing there in Countdown, uh, you're going to have a better sense of who you're fighting, what their state of readiness is. You're going to know if they have the power ammo. You're going to know what classes they brought to the fight. You're going to know if their supers are ready. and. At the end of a match, if you've had your ass kicked, you're going to know exactly how that went down. And you'll be able to awesome. learn from those engagements. And you'll be able to sell your team, okay, we know how they beat us last time, mm -hmm. let's see if they try it again and we know how to defend against mm -hmm. that now. So we wanted to, not to say that we wanted to make it less fun, mm -hmm. but we wanted to make it fun in a way that is learnable. Uh, fun in a way that if you're watching, you can understand what's going on instead of just a world that is awash with particle effects because <laughs> everything is exploding all the time. Right. And you briefly touched on new weapons. Can we expect to see any old weapons from year one, like maybe a Galahorn or... I will tell you right now, the Galahorn is fading into myth and legend. Just no! let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Exactly. Let it go. All right, Outrage. we've got... Let it go. Yes. Let it go. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I want to stand down. There's better things. Stand down. There are better things than my Galahorn. There will be others. Will it? There will be others. Yeah. Yes, we're moving on to a new world. <laughs> We're going to have all new things for you to discover and fall in love with. All right. Uh, I said before I'll the show you. I would never make anyone cry. And, and here you go. And here taking you go. Taking away here my you, No, no. He, no come on. He I took I something took, better. I, what if the, I'm not taking. I'm, I'm giving. All what right. if there's a sniper rifle that fires six sniper rifles? <laughs> you know what? It just fires six know. sniper rifles on the ground. You don't know. Yeah. We'll see. If you can give me that, then I will... Uh, 
get over the loss I of the Galahorn. I didn't mean to overpromise for you. <laughs> I'm in no position to confirm a sniper <laughs> rifle that fires six sniper rifles. Please don't hope for that. Please don't tweet at me asking when it's coming after the game. <laughs> Everybody, hashtag justice for sniper rifles. Justin. All right, well, we're running a poll here that's, uh, what are you most excited for for Destiny 2? And overwhelmingly right now, it looks wow. like it's going story. story. So, yep. what can we expect to see in Destiny 2 that we might remember from Destiny 1? Is there any parts of the map we can still visit? Is what? the loot cave still there? Oh, the loot, not the, the loot, loot cave. The loot cave, the loot cave, like the Gallerhorn, is also <laughs> passed into myth and legend. Uh, whenever we uh, launch new content and welcome new players to our community, the funnest part is always when that one person goes to their favorite forum and says, I walked into a cave and there were some bones on the ground, <laughs> and I pressed a button and some voice whispered to me about a million deaths not being enough. Who's Master Rahul? Oh. Yeah. And then one of the veterans of our community will go, aw. Like the kindergarten. kindergartens. Yeah. Exactly. Who wants to tell them? It's so uh, cute. We're telling a brand new story in Destiny. Uh, you can expect to find the Vanguard. You can expect the Hunter, the Titan, and the Warlock mm -hmm. to make a comeback in some new and refined and interesting ways. Uh, you can expect that we are going to send you to brand new spaces. Okay. Uh, we're sending you out to the European dead zone. We're sending you out to moons in orbit around Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, you know, we are sending you to... Uh, the edges of the solar system and back again. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are telling a story about a fighting force that has toppled over every foe that they found in their path uh, in a matter of hours. And now they have been set on the run. So we've raised the stakes. We've made the game of destiny a little bit more dangerous. We have more story missions than you've ever seen in destiny. We have more cinematics. Oh. Yes. than you've ever watched in Destiny. Uh, you know, we're spicing up the action with new context. Mm -hmm. We're giving you characters that you can relate to that you'll find in the worlds that you explore. Mm -hmm. They'll have marching orders for you that will expose you to the lore that you'll be able to find secreted away in the landscape. Uh, there are you know, hidden caves that you can descend into. Mm -hmm. You can destroy a boss who's holding the key to a treasure cache. Oh. We're making mm -hmm. being in the worlds of Destiny uh, a lot more interesting, and we're making it easier for you to jump from activity to activity when you're in those mm -hmm. worlds. All along the way, we're telling a linear story that will unify everyone in our community in a common struggle, you know, that, that mm -hmm. common hero's path, you know, the mm -hmm. warrior's tale about protecting humanity and fighting the enemies that would drive us away from our homes. So we're really looking forward to it. Uh, whenever I see a new cutscene cross someone's desk, I'm just like, everything stops. <laughs> we're stopping the work, we're stopping the reading of the form. And, you know, like the fans of the game that we are at Bungie, we just mm -hmm. sit and watch it all come together and we watch the new finishing touches and polish that enter the build and it's just I mean it's such a fun thing at this stage of the game when it's in alpha and we're playing it at home on our couches you know and, and we're fans of the things that we get to work on and we're looking forward to the beta when everybody gets to join us in that space and play with us Can't and then wait. Uh, and then on the launch you know we moved up our launch two days on consoles just because we're so excited for people to join us <laughs> thank you her head almost exploded this morning that was when we had to tie her up yeah <laughs> listen all I'm hearing for all this new content this new amazing exploration and lore is that I'm going to have this much of a social life once the game No, drops. it's just online. It's true. Yeah. That's true. It's just That's a fine. social Destiny's life. Destiny's a social game. That's true. <laughs> uh, you, I mean, you told me you're the member of a clan. I am. So. I'm a member of a long-time raid group, and we are all best friends. And you know what? If one of my raid members can solo Crota, I'm sure that this new dude, Gary, is not going to be that much of an issue. Yeah, well... Gaul, as we call him, deserves your respect, and you will come to know that respect. Gaul's uh, going to get a shotgun to the face is what I'm hearing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Low, yep, equip that in your power uh, power weapon slot, and, uh, you know, look, I can't look for wait. that power. Look for those purple bricks. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we thank you and your clan for uh, the role that you're going to play. We're going to have clan support in the game. Yes. Uh, you'll be able to open up your pregame lobby to the single player to come in, and mm -hmm. you'll be able to be uh, the shepherd for them on their... Uh, on their first raid. For Maybe all the kindergartens. Yep. Maybe you'll get to be there when they finish their first raid for the first time. Oh. And they'll love you for it. Oh. Well, th now this is going to come out on PS4, Xbox, and PC with a slight delay to the PC release, yeah, the right? Yeah, PC, we'll find the PC on uh, October 24th. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first time in a very long time mm -hmm. that Bungie has served players anywhere else but a console. Mm -hmm. So we want to get that right. We want to create something that we're thrilled to unleash into the world and uh, you know we know that PC gamers have very high expectations <laughs> so we're going to build this from the ground up to be awesome and yeah. uh, you look at me sure cuz I do right. <laughs> uh, actually and this is a very common question that and I'm seeing it here in the in the Twitter and it's a bit of a long shot but yeah 
Or is there going to be any ability to play characters on PC from consoles? Can you transfer oh, to take it all? That, to take that mm -hmm. progression and make it right. portable and move it. It's, it's definitely something that we have talked about mm -hmm. a, a great deal. I play Destiny on both platforms, and now we're adding a third. So, <laughs> you know, I certainly want to be able to mix it up with every segment of our community, and that's mm -hmm. painful for me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something that we've definitely talked about. It's not something that we would be ready to support at launch. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we would love to do mm -hmm. someday. Uh, it's obviously not a decision that we can make all on our own. It involves other people, and uh, we're starting to have those conversations with them to see if they'd be open to something like that in the future. Well, awesome. we would like you to know that we are fine with it. Yeah. Like, that's right. holding you up well, back yeah, at all. Yeah, if, if it was us that Everyone you need confirmation from, like, Everyone in this room is totally fine right. with the idea. So I have a green light from Rooster green Teeth. Green light from Rooster Teeth. That's yep, one. That's one. Okay. So. It's, it's an important vote. I'm, right. I'm sure the Internet's on our <laughs> side, let's, too. Let's fan out and make the comments <laughs> come out, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. So thank we're coming so up much. September and October, two yes. days early yep. now in console. Yes, and the open beta starts July 21st. Uh, we're going to need everyone, all hands on deck for that. Please come and help us test our tech. Please help us you know, prepare for a good, clean launch. And uh, if you want to play even earlier than that, go to destinythegame.com. You can check out how you can get in a little bit early uh, with a pre-order. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank we're you gonna... so much. Are you okay? I'm good. Do you need, do you need like a last minute? Like... I have... Listen, this has been an absolute dream, so thank you. You have made your order proud. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting emotional. You killed her.